Good evening, Glue Troopers. Max of Max's Models here in my operations room. Well, operating is just what I had to do on the HU-178 model. The early version wing fits without too much argument, but the late model wing requires you to remove all of the filleted section off of the fuselage. And I thought I had cut it. It, it shows you the instructions right there what you're supposed to remove, so that's what I removed, but it wasn't enough. I, it, they don't really make it clear. You've got to remove all the filleted section or the wing won't sit down. And uh, I got in there and I realized that, uh, yeah, this is going to be more grinding than I expect. There's no way it's fitting without cutting all that out. So I got to work on it and it's a fairly thick plastic and kind of hard to remove, but I, I finally got it filed down. I did find that it was easier to place if I went ahead and removed the bottom section of the wing, mounted the top section. And uh, that way you can make all of your uh, corrections, keep regrinding and everything. And trust me, you're going to be doing some regrinding. But uh, I finally got enough of it removed and you've got to get rid of all of the flared bit because the uh, bottom of the wing has its own flare point. So once I did that, I was able to seat the wing. Uh, I got it down there and got it, got it down, got it uh, done and got the wing mounted. Uh, but that had to harden. So I thought, you know what, I'll work on something else, something simple and easy. So I grabbed that Atlantis repop of the Aurora 727. And since my work desk was busy, I sat at the computer and figured, you know what, I'll have a little brain food here while I'm uh, working on this model. So, ooh, nothing like a, a, a intellectual property like Astro Zombies. <laughs> and uh, you know what? That makes a good segue for this segment of the show of Max's Movies. Astro Zombies has got to be probably a contender with Plan 9 from Outer Space for the worst movie ever made. And uh, I watched a few of the other uh, great uh, Hollywood uh, outputs of the mid-60s, like Faster Pussycat, Kill Kill, and of course, The Mysterions, which actually really wasn't all that bad, all things. I mean, you know, laughable to us. But, uh, but I got a little curious because the Astro Zombies, I could not believe that movie actually made money. It made three million bucks on a thirty-seven million dollar budget, and they still make toys for it. And I was like, it, it, of course, the internet leads you over the same actors and actresses and stuff. So let me do this other one, and I'm like, what kind of weird movie? Oh yeah, it's got that uh, same actress in it, Tura Satana. And I was like, wait a minute, wait a minute, don't tell me. And oh yeah, oh snap, Mojo Resin makes a model of Tura Santana. From Faster Pussycat Kill Kill. And I'm kind of like, ah, the Styrene River is the gift that just keeps on giving. And uh, of course, The Mysterious is much more of a quote unquote mainstream movie. And I'm using that uh, term loosely. But anyway, so while these things are going on in the background, uh, I uh, trying to keep a straight face. Oh, God. Ooh, I'll use the flashlight to recharge my forehead. Um, uh, that's so it for the Max's Movies segment of this show. I just, I just cracked me up. See, models make you smile in, in movies. They, they make you funny when you're feeling down. The Aurora 727, not a lot of surprise, or excuse me, Atlanta 727, not a lot of surprises. Actually, although fairly low detail, it's not a bad kit. I mean, there are a few minor fit issues. It's a big kit. And, um, you know, it took a lot of clamps to get it to seal. It didn't have the greatest fit. And there's not a lot of surface detail, but... You know, so what? Uh, it wouldn't actually make a bad desktop display model because it's big. You can paint it however you want. It comes just with the Boeing house color uh, decals. But um, I think it has more to do with licensing than anything else. It doesn't have any little bits and bobs hanging off of it. So that's good. It might make, you know, that's actually a model kid could probably play with without destroying it if you put enough glue on it. And uh, one thing I was impressed is that it has these little stoppers inside the uh, windshield frame so you can slide the canopy glass in after you've assembled the model without worrying about it falling inside the model and it took a few clamps to hold everything in place now one thing i will warn you it does come with a uh, full set of landing gears and gear doors but no landing gear bays it's basically a, uh, a wheels up airplane with the doors molded in place so you're gonna have to cut them out and put in your own landing gear bays or just glue the gear sticking out of the bottom although to have the doors, which with a kit like that is all I think anybody's going to do. It's not the kind of kit you would want to 
bother to hyper detail. But anyway, then I was able to go back and start working on the uh, uh, Hankel again and uh, got the wings on. So that allowed me to go ahead and start uh, working on the tail. And of course, that's a butt joint tail. So there's that. So set that back up to dry, and while I was rummaging around, I realized that uh, I had we had just recently talked about the passing of Bud Anderson, and I stumbled across this P51 kit I had, which is already pre-painted. It's uh, one of those Revell, uh, you don't need to paint it kits, and it was Old Crow, Bud Anderson's airplane. So I was like, well, what the heck, this one as good as anything else to get starting on. While I'm waiting on the other stuff, I've got the 727 hardening, got the uh, HE-178 hardening, and uh, they actually did a not bad job on it. Uh, it's not like super detailed, but, you know, the D-Day stripes are there. It's mostly painted. Uh, one thing is that uh, although it comes with a black propeller and a red spinner, the decals have the yellow stripe for the spinner and the checkerboard for the nose. Uh, one thing I wonder about the canopy, I was going to try the straight B model canopy, but it didn't fit very well. So I went ahead and chopped off the uh, back windows and used the Malcolm hood. It fit a lot better. And uh, I also had to use thick glue. I tried starting this with some thin glue, and I think the paint was just not letting it bond to the plastic. So I went with the thick glue, and uh, that took care of all the problems. But it went together without any argument. The stuff uh, I was using the Tammy glue, which is still fairly quick drying. So uh, it, it, Actually, it just took a couple hours. I was watching movies in the meantime and everything and moving around between the other models see if there's anything I could do. And I was kind of surprised that it went together uh, as quickly and easily as it did so I don't have to worry about painting anything. Uh, there's supposed to be a pilot figure. It was not in the box. Not a big deal. Um, that was just... I'll probably just set it on the shelf with the canopy open. But... It was a fun, that's a really good, I think it was designed as an entry level kit for kids and stuff like that. And not a bad idea actually, cause it really looks pretty good. The decals were decent. Uh, it's a standard Revell 148 scale P51B Mustang. So it's got all the details you would expect. It's just basically pre-painted as all. And, uh, by the end of the movies, uh, well, I think by this point I was watching documentaries, but, it, I had the thing pretty much done. The, the glue set up quick. Uh, Got to be careful with the horizontal stabilizers. And something about horizontal stabilizers today. You know, the butt joints on the HE-178 and on this model, they uh, wanted to sag, so I had to be careful. The stripe around the spinner uh, is a decal, but I had to use a lot of Microset uh, Mark Mark Fit. And the same for the decal that goes around the cowling because... They're not bad, but they, they 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 were easy to work with, but they don't conform that well. They want to wrinkle a little bit. You know, they're not exactly, uh, you know, when any time you decal a circle, you're going to have problems. It's just hard to get everything just right. But as I started putting the decals on, it really started coming to life. Uh, the D-Day stripes do show through the de uh, decals. And uh, so, you know, while watching, you know, Japanese commandos fight aliens from another planet who are here to steal our women. And, uh, man, you just sick, uh, tourists, a town on them. Yeah. <laughs> um, no, oh, I just got the little irony because she was a Japanese American actress and I was, hey, you see the styrene river. It loves to love its confluence. Okay. I'm off point. Anyway. So, uh, there's, uh, really not a whole lot else to say about it. The 727, I'll have to go out to the shop to get painted. Uh, and the uh, the H the one the HS one seventy eight is pretty much about as far as I'm going to go. The canopy doesn't fit where the flip shock, and uh, but uh, the Aurora kit actually didn't. The Atlantis kit, excuse me, Atlantis kit really didn't give me much argument. Uh, and uh, the Mustang's up on the shelf. Just uh, let the micro uh, mark fit uh, set up on it, and that's really all I have to say about that. Uh, once uh, the Heinkel is uh, done uh, hardening, it'll we'll put it in this little box and it'll be in stack to go out. Obviously, I can't really paint much here in the house, especially if my sinuses are the way they are and everything. I don't want to be around that. But that's where we're at for now. Tomorrow, I'll probably crack open another box and start on something else. Um, but it's keeping me sane. Bad movies and good models. Well, bad movies and bad models. Bad movies and models. Movies and models. Ooh, that could be another YouTube channel. No, 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 no. Well, that's basically what this one is.
Okay, now I'm just rambling. Uh, Time for more cold medicine. Guys, take care of yourselves. And as always, model on.